Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is on a little mini vacation. Uh, we got a special guest in the building. My man Trevor Noah is here. What's going on? Thanks for having me, everybody. How do you feel, Trev? I've always wanted to know why do you call it the world's most dangerous show? What what is that about? Um, I think it might have been more dangerous than it used to be. Meaning that people used to actually be afraid to come up here. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, like yeah, they survived yeah, 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 yeah. Afterward, so it's kind of like the Eminem and Eight Mile thing. We kind of like would say what people thought about us mm -hmm. before, you know, and then they come yeah. on the show. Yeah, and realize, oh, it's not that bad. Trevor's okay. like, it's not yeah. dangerous up here. I feel great. No, no, no. I, I just wondered. I, you never know. <laughs> we used to have t-shirts that said, I survived the breakfast club. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I would like one of those t-shirts. So what do you think is going to happen when this whole thing with Donald Trump one day, hopefully really soon, comes to an end? You think there'll be tons of movies and... When it comes to an end? It's not coming to an end. I hope so. Here's the here's thing I, I think people Every take day. for granted. This guy feels like he, he was robbed of the election when he won. <laughs> What is he going to do when he loses? Yeah, people act like he's going to... I'm being, they, they, I'm being for yes, real about they, this, by the way. Trev, like I, I just, I, I think people take for granted that that guy thinks everything is a conspiracy. Trev, you're smarter than me. Please explain this to people, because I've been trying to tell people this. It's not going to be a peaceful transfer of power. I don't think it's going to be a transfer of power at all. I, I, don't, I don't think, think he's going anywhere. I don't think Donald Trump does anything normally. I wouldn't be shocked if he just goes like, I'm not leaving the White I'm House. I'm not leaving. I could see him just being like, I'm <laughs> yes. not leaving. There were fake votes. Three million <laughs> fake Mexicans voted. I'm not leaving. And then, and then like, and you know what's weird about America is America has all these rules where you guys have just agreed to things, but it's not like written down properly. Mm -hmm. And then they'll just be like, but you're supposed to leave, Donald. He's like, I'm not leaving. Right. And then when you New have rule. William Barr, William Barr's the head of the DOJ. And he'll say, we did he can challenge yeah, we, the election. Exactly. Yeah, Run it up votes. to the Supreme Court. You and you know what I love about, whenever you say stuff like this, people be like, well, you know what, our Constitution, our, man, Constitution, Donald Trump doesn't care. Nothing to do he with wipe his, he's wiping his ass he with it. He does not care about the Constitution. You but see how he is. It makes great material, but it's also like, this is amazing that this is even happening. Yeah. Like, you look at them saying, yes, we did quid pro quo. It's okay. We do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't okay. think it makes great material, to be honest. I think I think things that make great material are things that you have to turn into material. What I don't like about Donald Trump as a comedian is, like, anyone can just do a Donald Trump joke. It, mm -hmm. It's too easy. Right. Do you know what I mean? The whole thing is a joke. Yeah. So, like, what I try and do is I try and use Donald Trump to talk about other stories, other things that are happening in the world. So we get to talk about Finland because of Donald Trump. You get to talk about what's happening, you know, in, like, random countries. You'll fight with New Zealand. Mm -hmm. You'll have beef with, like, Norway. You'll talk about Greenland. He'll... <laughs> so I want to talk about that stuff and then just use him. But if I can, I don't talk about him. Hold on, serious question. Is is reporting on this administration actually fun? Because this is some real serious shit that we're dealing with. So is it, is it, do you look at it? Can you make a joke out of this? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Here's the thing. I'm not going to give Donald Trump the pleasure of being the boogeyman. Right. Do you know what I mean? He like he he wishes he was that. That's why he's got that face. The thing he does. <laughs> no, seriously, he wants you to, he wants to be that dude where everyone's like, wow, I'm so afraid of him. I'm just, mm -hmm. Man, you got to laugh at the guy. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You, 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 you've got to laugh at people like him because I think leaders like that sometimes... They, they they command or they demand a respect that they don't deserve. Right. And in, in my honest opinion, that's one of the great things you can do to leaders like this is you laugh. You laugh at the absurd shit that they do and you call out the crazy things that they say. But how funny is fascism, though? Yeah, but it's not fascism yet. That's the, it's that's, there. No, but that's, that's the thing about America is like, look, the road to fascism has always been paved with democracy. Yes. Right? But, but I don't think we should live in an alarmist place where we go like, it's happening now. Donald Trump is not Hitler. You know what I mean? Not it's yet. Not, yeah, but he's not now. And the thing is, America's in a place where like, for the, for the, for the most part, guys have built a pretty solid country. You know mm. what I mean? For the most part. Like the fact that people can be talking about impeachment. This is, it's, it's, a, it's a solid process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's been a few. You know, I always think Donald Trump pokes holes. Right. In your boat, like he shows you where all the leaks are. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, Charlemagne, I don't think I don't think you're there yet. I think you'll feel it when it's coming, you but you're see, not there yet. It's, it's I feel it coming. Just the fact that he just did not give a fuck about democracy in any way, shape, or form. He's lawless. He, like he doesn't care. Yeah, but the biggest thing you guys have in your favor is your military. Your military doesn't go. They they like your military likes following the rules. Yeah, mm -hmm. they love following the rules and that's the big thing in every country around the world when fascism comes the guy goes like yo military you with me and they're like general we are with you and then there's a coup so it turns the military against the people yeah basically. but i mean gotcha. i don't i don't see that happening in america the military goes we go with the rules and that's it now do you think people will forgive donald trump if he was singing a fuji song and he said the n-word <laughs> <laughs> i think people will be more impressed that he knows a fuji song <laughs> if he sang a fuji song oh man that's a funny idea <laughs> what if he said ninja instead i'm just i'm just picturing Donald Trump sitting there with a selfie camera <laughs> singing the food ready or not here I come 
you can't hide. <laughs> you had some interesting things to say about Gina Rodriguez, though, and we played that up here actually on the oh, Breakfast you did? Club. Yes, in the Rumor Report. Right. Your advice that you gave to artists to just do like how they do radio versions. Yeah, so here's what I was saying is like, I, I think I'd, like, it's a joke, but I mean, look, I get it. I get the confusion, you know? And I think in America, I, I understand that there's a, there's, a, there's a fundamental confusion that happens in and around hip hop. Mm-hmm. And some people don't understand the sensitivities that they need to have in and around words that they're using on. It's like, it's not like you can't use the word, you can use it, but then don't be shocked when something happens to you. Absolutely. You know? And so you've got to be the kind of person who says, look, man, I understand the sensitivities around this. I may have grown up with hip hop. I may have identified with black culture, mm-hmm. but I also understand fun- fundamentally as a person, you got to be like, you got to be the kind of person who says, look, I also understand that I'm not black or I have not lived the black experience. I may have lived as a part of it. Right. But there, there, there's something that comes with that where as black people we go like, yo, the, the, it's like the one the one perk to the oppression is getting the N-word mm-hmm. in a weird way. You know? And I think I people think, always think... change the lyrics. Like if you're a heterosexual man singing a woman's lyrics, they'll change those words like to suit who people, they are. And... Here's the thing with me. People censor themselves all that. You you, you ever wrapped around your mom when you were young? Yeah. Everyone censored their words. Like mm-hmm. no one, no one like you know slipped what you up. Can't say. No one slipped <laughs> up and said a curse word in front of their mom or their grand or their aunt or something. Everyone knows how to censor themselves. Right, especially when it comes to hip hop. So I don't get why people make it such a tough thing. Well, she's like, it's my favorite song. I just, I can't. What am I supposed to do? Well, what about when you caught up? I'm just playing white devil's advocate. When you caught up in the moment, <laughs> when, you, <laughs> when, you, when you when you caught up in the moment, you had a concert, or you in the car, yes. you on your IG live. Yes. Sometimes you might. You're just not come caught out. up in. The, you're never caught up in the moment, man. There's no such thing. You, Maybe what, you, you don't know the lyric. The N word just pops around the corner, surprises you. You didn't know it was coming. Yeah, but it don't Whoa. give you the same feeling, huh? Because I never hesitate to put a. Whoa, oh, shit! <laughs> that came out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Caught me off guard, Charlemagne. <laughs> I had to say it. I oh, did man. agree. I did agree with you that rappers have the power to change the narrative, though. Yeah, well, I was saying it as a joke, and I mean, I was just like, just like they should just mm-hmm. make like another version, like a radio. I yeah. think they should make like White a version. like a non non black people version mm-hmm. that everyone can rap along to. Like they just find like an alternate word, and then everyone can just rap. You know what I mean? And I use the word; it never feels good using it. And I also feel like imagine you was teasing somebody their whole life. And then they finally started calling themselves exactly. what you've been calling them exactly. as an insult. Right. That's what I think old white people look at the N-word as. Yeah, I also think white people didn't think the N-word could be cool like that. I think that 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 pisses a few white people off. Mm-hmm. Is they thought it was only going to be like a word of oppression and then black people made it a cool thing. And then they're yeah. like, I want it back now. And it's like, mm-hmm. no, 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 it's done. But then it's what about not. the older black people who like, why do y'all call yourselves that? That word I, has too much I, blood I, on it. I understand it as a ju- I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. Mm-hmm. Right. I just know that it's black people who should be deciding the thing. Right. That's all I know. Because it's hard to individualize, like say, well, this person grew up and then yeah, this person no, but, didn't. It's just sh- there's no way you can make a rule for there's everyone. There's no right or wrong answer. I get like there's a lot of older black people who'd be like, you just you we got to get rid of that word. And it never existed. And you you holding us back. Mm-hmm. And then young black people are like, no, people are still going to say that word. So that I'm going to I'm going to own that word as a young black man. I'm going right. to own that word as a young black woman. I'm going to own that word before somebody tries to own me with that word. And I think that's what a lot of people are saying, but I don't think that there's a wrong answer. Yeah. You know, it's just personal preference. Some people curse, some people don't curse. Some people will say the n-word, some people won't say the n-word. But if you are not black, I can save you a lot of stress in your just life don't do it. by just saying <laughs> don't do it. I use the word in context. I don't use it as a term term of endearment. Oh, you don't? Nah. Like this morning I did Donkey of the Day uh for this teacher named Mr. Miller, who part of as part of his science curriculum, he had the, the girls twerking in class. Yes. He gave him twenty five dollars. And I play a game called Guess What Race It Is, and I'm like, no need to guess. These are niggas. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the truth? I use it in context. <laughs> I use it in I context. I don't agree with that. I don't think there is context. I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I think I think to be honest with you, I feel like sometimes providing context for the word gives it a little bit more of the power that it used to have when in fact we're trying to get it away from that. In my opinion, but there's no answer there's no yeah. right answer right. again. It's your opinion. I don't I'm think saying, it's higher frequency words. I don't think yeah, but what I'm saying no, what I'm saying is this is I go, I don't think there should be like I don't think there is context to the N word. Right. It's it's the same way. So I'll give you an example. It's like like when you hang out with a group of women, they'll say bitch to each other in like right. five different ways. Sure and I do. don't know. I don't understand what's going on. I don't yeah. even understand how they're doing this. But you can't but do it. I never jump in. I never jump in and be like, yeah, bitch. My like boyfriend I'm... would never say the word bitch to me. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, though, because I don't I don't I really don't understand what the what the thing is. And We'd so, be like, bitch, did you see? You see. So, yeah. so and, and that's that's great. 
that's great, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you said that's great. Members of the gay community will say things to each other where I'm like, I'm not stepping into this using these words. Mm-hmm. It is not my place, mm-hmm. nor do I wish for it to be my place. Yeah. That's my thing. I saw a young Trevor Noah at uh, the Bernie Sanders rally. Did you oh, see that? Oh, that little, that picture? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny you said, you said that someone, my, my best friend from home sent that to me. He's like, damn, Bernie makes you look real young. I was like, thank you, <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you, you very feel much. Like, for that. I want to meet this kid. It's funny. Everyone, was... everyone says that every time anyone sees any type of mixed race child, it's mine. <laughs> and what people don't realize about that is, there's a moment when it's not funny for me. Yeah. Because like you know, people be like, oh, Charlemagne, look your kid. Like it's like, no, you can't just say that. You should say, I saw a kid who looks. like, You can't just say my kid. My kid, yeah, because like you're not taking care of your, your responsibility. I don't, I, yeah. I, just like that's like I don't, I don't, I don't even want to put that into the universe. That there's just like like a random little Trevor Noah running yeah. around. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It went viral though. It's Everybody good that you the like, bar for mixed race babies though. I just no man. <laughs> the bar. You Obama. <laughs> you Obama, J. Cole, and Drake. That's like the mixed race that, babies. That's it. Those are the four. Okay. Okay. I'll take it. I'll <laughs> what's, take it. What's the what's the South African equivalent for the word nigga? Is there one? Yeah, we had Kaffa. Kaffa. Interesting, interesting story. This is how wild this is. This, this is why, like, I... So when, when people argue with me about the world, the word, this is what I say, is I go, I don't agree with the idea of saying you should ban the word or get rid of the word or you... I, I don't think you can. I'll tell you why. Because I don't think the word, the word itself has the power. It's the power that comes with the word that it's, like, that's associated to the word. Does that make sense? So what the N-word represents, especially in America, is, is, is a system of oppression mm-hmm. and what happened to black people in the country. Mm-hmm. But when you travel to other countries, they have other words for what they did to black people as well. And so in South Africa, the, the N-word doesn't mean anything in the same way, but we have the word kafir or kafir, and it came from the, the Arabic kafir, mm-hmm. which means one who does not believe in Allah. And mm. so what happened is during the spice trade, like the, 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 the Muslim traders landed in South Africa and they met like the Zulus and the British because it was like, a, you know, it was a colonized space. Mm. And they were like, yo, do you guys believe in Allah? And they were like, no, we got another dude who got a contract with him. And they were like, all right, kafir, all of you, kafirs, which means non-believer. Right. And wow. then the white people were like, oh, they're talking to you guys. <laughs> they were like, yeah, all the black people, you the kafirs. And then that, that became the That's word. But on our side... No one made it. No one made it cool. No one like owned it. No one. So the word has basically just rap, died. Rappers don't own it in their no, music. Their no, because we didn't have rap. Maybe that's what it is. We didn't have rap. Yeah. Have you gone to a Kanye Sunday service yet? No, I haven't. Are you interested in that? What do you think about it? I I I'm torn. I'm torn because I grew up in a very religious family. So like I love Kanye Sunday service. I love the music, and I love the way he's composed the things. But it it throws me off sometimes when it's like a hip hop song that's been turned into gospel. And I just think of this because of my mom. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if you grew up in a religious house, right. you're always thinking about, like, what would your mom say about what you, you know? Right. So, like, I, I I don't, I don't, I still don't bless, I don't, I don't say, like, Jesus Christ, this is crazy. I don't say that <laughs> just because of my mom. Charlamagne's like, I say it all the time. I do all the time. You so do? I grew up on Jesus? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. We, 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 that, that was, that was my life, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't? I was Jehovah's Witness, so yeah. So, oh, Lord. Yeah, but Jehovah's Witness, oh, I mean, no. they, they, I see why you say Jehovah's Jesus Christ is God then. and Jesus is his son. <laughs> no, 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 I get that. I get yeah. that. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, you had it rough. Yeah, man. no, you had it really rough. I mean, you know, but you know what? I, I, yeah, I did. Nah, you had it rough. Yeah, because the, the holiday. Because I, really like, like, I had like, I had like fun religion. That's what I had. <laughs> Jehovah's Witness is not fun religion. It's I had fun strange. religion. No holidays. Well, evangelical <laughs> dancing in the church. What? Jehovah's Witness? Don't they believe that heaven is full already? Uh, they believe only a hundred and forty-four thousand are going to heaven. And I'm, I'm like, so it's full. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I never understood that concept. I, I never understood why people were knocking on my door, telling me, "Yo, you want to join this?" But it's full. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> then why would I want to join? No, because heaven's going to be on earth. There was 144,000 who got in at Gaza, and I remember the first time I asked him, yeah. he knocked on the door, and I spoke to him. I was like, "Wait, so it's full?" And he's like, "No, it's not full. It's 144,000." I was like, "But when? When did you start?" Like, I it's... always look at it as exclusive membership. I think that we yeah, get. And I it's think full. we put too many people in heaven, and it's full. I'm not gonna you are telling me in what, how many years has the Jehovah's Witness Church been around? Oh, I don't know, a long huh? time. And you're telling me in all that time, 144,000 people flats. haven't gotten in? Maybe they haven't filtered up yet. No, man, I man, don't like it'll, that. It'll, That's why I'm saying it's not Trev, fun religion. I don't it. like the idea that I'm going to be part of a religion where I'm going to be at heaven and be like, yo, Charlotte, Charlotte, man. I'm on the list. <laughs> yo, what do you mean it's full? What but think mean? about it. If we talk about people being sinless and not committing any sin. That's why I say it's not fun religion. Yeah. That's why that's, it's not fun religion. That's be, exactly what I'm talking that, about. Kevin's a hard club to that's get into. That's why I'm yeah. saying the religion I grew up in was a fun religion. All you had to do was accept Jesus Christ right. as your Lord and Savior and you were getting into heaven. It's not like that getting was it. into Soho. John 3 verse 16, baby. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You know who wrote whosoever that? Whosoever believed in him. A sinner. 
Yeah, everyone is a sinner, and that's what makes religion, my religion, yeah, religion fun, sin. Charlemagne. So heaven must, I mean, hell must be empty. Imagine then. you're going to go to heaven, there's no sinners? So hell is empty. By that logic, no, no, hell no, no, is completely no, no, empty. No, 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 by that logic, it's the people who have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. That's all it's about. you got to think of heaven like a club, right? Okay. There's people who are in the club, there's people who are not in the club. Now, when they say you come in the club, there's a dress code, right? So they say no open-toed shoes and no caps. <laughs> And so what you can do is you can put on a pair of shoes outside the club mm -hmm. and you can take your cap off and then you come in. That's accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now you're yeah. in the club. But then there's some people who are just refusing their whole lives to take off the cap. Now you're going to stand outside with your cap and your sandals, right, which is a weird line. look, but that's your vibe. And that's, I'm fine with that. What do you think <laughs> of the concept of uh, people putting Jesus before God, though? Because Jesus is the wait, son. Who, who does that? Everyone. Jesus. Wait, wait who's everyone? Yes, because Jesus you is the son. You can't make these God outlandish the statements next it's to me, not Charlemagne. Outlandish. Who is everyone? People act where, like show Jesus. Show me your stat. Where do you get these stats people from? People act like Jesus is God. But Jesus is God. That's, See, that don't make any sense because no, the Bible says you shouldn't. God says don't put someone no, on my level. No, 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 no. Yes, it does. Okay, which Bible are you referring to? Because the LeBron James version. Cause, <laughs> <laughs> right, because because according to the Bible, according to the Bible, it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and it's all one. So it's, all, it's yeah, really I never, complicated. I never agreed with that. Yeah, it's we not, never thought like that about Destiny's Child. Yeah, but it was that, never but, beyond. But they, yeah, but they never said they were one thing. Mm -hmm. They never said Destiny they were one Child? thing. No, but they said it was like a group. They said yeah, we knew it was a group. Trinity. So this isn't a group. We knew it was a group. No, they said it's by my, my I, I, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Trinity, the one and the same. How do you think the Holy Ghost feels? He don't even got a name. I think I think the Holy Ghost is living the best life. Can you imagine? You're like God as well, but you get to walk in the streets. No one's asking for selfies. <laughs> That's a pretty dope life to live. That's an amazing life. <laughs> imagine if you're Jesus. People are hanging you on the cross. If I was Jesus, I'd like, can you imagine? Like, they always go like, when is Jesus coming back? If I was Jesus, I wouldn't come back. I'd be like, yo, last oh. time they killed me, they didn't even have guns. You gonna come back now? <laughs> I, if I'm the Holy Ghost, I am living the best life possible. You are God without any of the stress. Oh, right. Huh? You just if you're like, like if life. you're like God the Father, you gotta worry about like people <sighs> worshiping false idols, they're burning to they be paint white beard painting. It's too much stress. Holy Ghost is living the life. Now, Jesus is more popular than God. And I'm gonna Jesus tell you why. More, yeah, because know. Jesus died for our sins. Yes. And Jesus has pictures. Yes. They connect them to every holiday. It's yes. marketing around that Jesus. Is, that is true. But I pray yes. to God every day. Yeah, but you don't even know you don't you, not, you don't think about God like you think about Jesus. You don't, you don't even know God's name. We, they, they, they <laughs> you just say, say God. You don't think yeah, about God, God like you we think don't. about Jesus. <laughs> it's two it's different the same people. Thing. What does that mean? Because I think I personally think they're two different entities. Okay, I understand why you say that. And yeah. there's people named Jesus out here. I, I'll say this. I'll say this. Look, I'll say this. I think if if it is because I've always struggled with I I like I like religion. I like a lot of its teachings. Right. What I struggle with is the church. I struggle with the people attached mm -hmm. to the church, and I struggle with the things that they do in the name of the church. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I've always struggled with that my whole life. Right. But I do love the core teachings of religion if you apply them correctly. Because I always tell this to people: the Bible has every side to every story. Do you get what I'm saying? Right. So in the Bible, it'll, it'll tell you that you need to chop somebody's head off if they're doing some shit. But it also says you need to forgive them. It also says you need to go to war. It says you need to go, you need to You need to focus on peace. You know, it says mm -hmm. you... So for me, I like I like those teachings because if you read the Bible from, from cover to cover, it's a balanced book. Mm -hmm. It really is a balanced book. It's flawed too, though. Yeah, of, but everything is, but it's a yeah. balanced book. So what, did, did you say like, that? Like you past? apply it. If you, you can apply the Bible however you want to apply it in your right. life. Everyone can use it you for any excuse. You can interpret it how you want to interpret you can, it. You can. But see, use but this part, people, but not this you part. Can. With that said, what about people who use it to justify being homophobic? Yeah, but that's my point. But the Bible also says, "Judge not, lest you be judged first. But we all—they huh? always forget that. Yeah, but that's their. But that's, that's the my part, point. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Everyone can choose. Don't forget. During the biggest periods of racism in America, in South Africa, in other parts of the world, what did they use the Bible? The Bible. They talked about miscegenation. They said, look at these scriptures that mm -hmm. say you should not be mixing of the mixing. Yeah. And they choose select phrases in the Bible that then justify what they... Everyone can Slaves use the Bible. Slaves should worship their earthly masters. Exactly. Everyone can use the Bible to justify whatever they wanted to say. Did you see it's this pastor that. that was trending over the weekend? No, for doing what? Eating pussy. <laughs> <laughs> they have video of him. <laughs> <laughs> Who's pussy? Uh, not Another his Another woman. Okay. But see, that's, that's the more the important thing. The Bible also thing. says there's power, power, power in the tongue. <laughs> Bible says that. I'm just saying. <laughs> you don't get a pound for that. No, it's good that he used the scripture. I found that impressive. I always find it impressive when people use scripture for shit like that. I'm just like, I'm like, well done, man. Well done. No, I didn't see this. Oh, would that make you not want to go to that person's church? If but this is what I'm saying to you about mm -hmm. the church. Here's my problem. Right. My problem is you should not be supporting 
a person, you should be supporting your God, you should be in your religion. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the time, churches and pastors have taken that power and that mantle and they've created their own world of being a false idol and that's part of the problem. Do you know what I mean? It's the same thing that happens in politics in America. I don't understand why people support the politician. You should be supporting your, policy. your, your policies. You should say, this is what I need done in this country. This is what I want to see happen with education. This is what I want to see happen yes. with low so income communities. not a particular communities. political party, no, but you shouldn't care. that you You shouldn't with. care if the politician gets taken down. Because mm-hmm. that's what happens is people get obsessed with the politician. And so it becomes a cult of personality. And now people don't know how to separate the person from the policies. And so if your politician gets taken down, you're like, no, 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 they couldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. No, I, I don't accept it. Why? Because you're afraid that that means now your policies have been undermined. Whereas yes. if you've always said, I support these policies and I don't support... In fact, in America, I feel like people should swap the way they treat sports with the way they treat politics. Mm-hmm. I feel like people who treat sports in a really healthy manner. In sports, they go, this is my team. This is what we're about. If there's players who are doing some crazy shit that they don't agree with, they're not playing well, they're not you know, not passing the ball, not scoring, what, they, what do they say? Fuck him. Kick him out of the team. That's right. <laughs> we need to kick that coach out, kick that player out. That's not what this team is about. Yes. But then with politics, mm-hmm. people are like, no, no, that's we're just going to keep him. We just, you know what I mean? But I, that's the problem with America now, right? Because whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you should care about the country. You should care exactly. about democracy, the Constitution. So that guy's not good for none of it. Right. But the problem is, you only have two parties in America. Yeah. Right. Imagine if you only had two sports teams. Ugh. People would kill each other. <laughs> Whereas now, you can team up. You can be like, yo, who are you? Celtics? Who are you? Uh, Heat? All right, we both hate the Lakers? Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. But we can be friends. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that's that's a healthier way to live in politics. I don't think there's two parties. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably one of the biggest things that's going to divide and keep on dividing America is the idea that there are only two ideas of how to live life. There are not two ideas on anything. You guys have 17 types of cereal. You only got two political parties? We have more than 17 types of cereal. Exactly. <laughs> and you got, you got what, two political parties only? There's others, but I feel like... No, but I mean, no, it's not real. But it's not real. Not really. It's not, really it's not real. It's, it's going to create a system mm-hmm. where you continuously go, what are you? I'm a republic. I'm a Democrat. It's it's over. You, you, know, you don't go anywhere from there. I, think, I don't think you can go anywhere from there. I think we should... I think Americans should start talking to people like you more. And the reason I say that, like, you're from South Africa, so your view of American politics is very objective. I don't think it's... I think it's hard for people to have a nuanced, objective view of American politics when you're from here. Well, I mean, it's as, it's as objective as I can be considering that your conditioning is being conditioned. So I only yeah. I only know what I know. I've only been taught what I've been taught. My mm-hmm. ideas change all the time. So I don't know how objective I am as a person. Yeah. I'm as, I'm as objective as opinions. the things I've learned. Yes. And let me ask you this. People are very fanatical over religion and over politics. Right. So have you gotten any crazy, like, death threats of people coming at you or coming yeah, at you? Yeah, but death threats are par for the course. I mean, mm-hmm. that's... I love them. That's you love death threats. I mean, you yeah. are a strange person, Charlemagne. Yeah, very strange. <laughs> Who I, loves death threats? I mean, we get them. Yeah, it like, doesn't mean I'm gonna love them. Malcolm X said, "If you don't have no critics, you likely have no success." Yeah, there's Wait, a difference between critics and death threats. No, they're best. Critics. I will take critics. <laughs> <laughs> I will take crit- if you are out there. Criticize me. Send the tweets. Do not threaten my life. Was anything ever serious enough that you had to take action? Or? No, 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 no. I've I've been I've been really lucky. Look, here's the thing as well. Like I I, I grew up in a world where. Like, you know, violence and death weren't the furthest realities from what you existed within. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Right. So for me, I, I know it's a, maybe it's a, it's a you know, knock on wood thing to say, but I feel like the people who send the threats are not the ones you got to worry about. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right, because they're not It's really... always the one who's just quiet and then pops yeah. up out of nowhere. So the ones who send the death threats, I'm like, all right, vent, vent, vent as much as you need to vent. But, you know, those are not <laughs> the ones you should be worrying about a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. I was reading this article in The Guardian and the headline was, Why are South African cities still so segregated 25 years after apartheid? Did you read that article? No. I've, I've read a bunch of articles about that, though. What, 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 what would your answer to that question be? Well, here's, here's, here's the difficulty that I struggle with in life. I think too many times we focus on integration, not realizing that what we're really striving for in society, in my humble opinion, is equal access to opportunity. Mm. That's what we're really looking for. Mm. I don't think we should have to live in a world where we force everybody to live in like, it's like, yo, if Charlemagne, if you want to live in a black community that specifically does black things, that's good for you. That's fine. Those you are safe have spaces. have a great education system right. that like, is on, poor, on par with the education system. There are many types community. of communities. Like, there's communities out there, the Amish community. They'll be like, yeah, we live in our little Amish community. I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't think that they should get 
fewer things in, 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 in life. I don't think they should have inferior access to anything yeah. because they have chosen mm -hmm. to be with their people. And I think that's, that's oftentimes the problem I've had is like people keep fighting for integration. But what they don't realize is a lot of the time, the reason black people were trying to move to white neighborhoods is because the they had system. sanitation, they mm -hmm. had electricity, they had better schools, they had. Mm -hmm. And so your mind went, I gotta move there to right. get. Better food choices. But the truth is, we should have been getting everywhere. Yeah. That's my opinion. And so I don't think we should have to live in a world where everyone is, mm -hmm. you know, now it's like, oh no, do you wanna live in a, I, what if Trevor goes, I wanna live in a South African community in New York, am I not allowed to do that? I would think that you would want to. Like we are a natural tribal people. I wanna be around my own people. Right, I don't wanna do that, that's why I left. But. <laughs> <laughs> South Africa's great, man. Yes, but I'm not gonna live in a South African community in New York. Why would yeah. I come all the way here to live in the South African community? <laughs> so the thing is, the thing is, <laughs> the thing is for me, I just wanna live in a world mm -hmm where it does not matter where you live. You know, it should not matter that, yeah, you know what, you, you live in the blackest part of Harlem, you get a school that is just as good as the best part of Manhattan. Right. You know, you grow up in Compton, you have access to the best policing services as if you live in Bel Air. And I think that's what we should be striving towards. You don't have to try and get everyone to live in everyone's area. Now we're counting people out and trying to make sure the colors are the right ratios. It's more about can everyone live the best life possible? And can we make sure that it doesn't change depending on the color of their skin and where they live? Yeah, mm. I live in Best Eye now. I love coming outside and seeing black people. And right. A lot of people will be like, oh, I'm moving out and you know, whatever, but I just feel like it's nice. You come outside, how you doing, what's good? And it just feels good, like to go to Caribbean it does feel restaurants, good. soul food It does spots. feel good. It feels good, like, so for instance, I grew up my whole life, Sunday mornings, music playing my neighbors, cleaning the stoop, doing something, but that's like the culture that I grew up in. So right. for me, if there is music playing really loud on a Saturday or Sunday morning, I have never thought to myself, I need to call the police <laughs> or I need to tell somebody about this. I'm just like, it's life. And in your community, there are certain shared rules and ideas that you have where you go like, yeah, this is, this is what happens. A guy's gonna be on the corner playing music loud and that's what he does during the day. Mm -hmm. I'm not offended by that right. because I don't see that as an assault on me or who I am. But then with some communities where people are like, shh, lights out, everybody mm -hmm. keep it, can you keep it down please? Mm -hmm. Everybody keep it down, you see what I'm saying? Right. And so I get that, and so we wanna live where well, we like things. Some people go live on a golf estate with each other, cause they're like, we all like golf. Yeah. I don't like golf, so I'm not gonna go live in a golf estate. Mm -hmm. But as I say, equal opportunity, equal access. I think that's the bigger thing people have been fighting about. Yeah, uh, the funny thing is, I, I agree with you, but it's hard, I guess, to live around who you wanna live around because even though you may be black it may not be people that are financially as well off as you so you want to live around rich people is what you're saying no <laughs> i yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just think it would be a little awkward you know if, if people know that's the house with where the money is you, you know, know, in you, know I don't know you know different you know what's though, funny yeah it's like a the projects would be right here but then right across the street is you know houses but that every community knows that and yeah. and but here's my fine. thing though here's my thing so have you ever been to South Africa? Yeah, I was with you. I was there. With, I saw oh, you. Oh yes, South of Africa. course. I <laughs> yeah. Thought, yeah, but it was like a big. You know, yeah, you yeah. forget where it's we different. are in the world. No, no, I forget where we are in the world. So I hope you went to Soweto when you were there. But if you didn't, I did go to Soweto right. when I went. Soweto is a township in South Africa, fundamentally one of the biggest hoods in the world. Mm -hmm. That's what it was created as. Right. It was designed by the apartheid government to be destroyed as quickly as possible should the black people rise they up. They just wanted people who were working. And to that's come and what have it was. Place. It was like, how do we get black people to live in a space that's close enough to the city that they can come work, but not so close that they can just walk here and visit us when we don't want them to? Mm -hmm. That community has and has continued to become a bastion of like growth where like the first black owned mall in South Africa built and owned was was in Soweto. Like, you look at how houses have, like, people did what you're saying. One dude became rich, and mm -hmm. he was like, I'm not leaving. Right. I'm going to build a nice house here. And that's what we need And then do. another yeah. person was like, well, then I'm going to build a nice house. And I'm going to build a nice house. And I'm going to build a nice And I do think there's something inspiring about it that. Is. There's something inspiring about going, man, everyone goes, i got to get out of the hood. And I get why. I get why you sometimes even need to do that. But there's also something about beautiful saying, no, I'm going to get the hood out of here. Yeah. Or transform your neighborhood by, 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 with your resources. Right. Yeah. Block by block, block by block. Which I think you know? is something that's happening now. But I do. It it it, it is it is slowly happening. Yeah. It really is slowly happening, and that's and that's something that I that I that I, I appreciated when people do that. Mm -hmm. You know, is just finding a way 
to infuse resources into their community and go like, no, this. let's take the money and put it back in. Let's put it back in. Let's put it back in. Let's build ourselves up as well. Because two things are happening at the same time. My mother always says this to me. She goes, while you are fighting to receive what you deserve from your government or from your world, you also need to be fighting to give it to yourself. Right. Mm. Two things are happening at the same time. And I think as the black community, yes, we should always be fighting for equality and equal access to resources because we are taxpayers. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? It's not like we're second class citizens in any way, shape or form. So you should be fighting for the things that you deserve. But at the same time, we must remember to fight to give it to ourselves. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. You've got two different spaces where it's like, yeah, you've also got a bit of personal responsibility. There's no one thing that exists in isolation. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm always trying to do on my side is go like, yes, fight for the thing, but remember the stuff that I can be doing for myself as well. What could you apply from your, your upbringing in South Africa to American culture that could benefit us? Oh man, what could I apply? That's that's a tough one. One, one thing I will say is this. One of the biggest things I feel happened in America, you know, because of the slave trade is it wasn't just people that were stolen from Africa. It wasn't just lives that were stolen from Africa. The more I read about it, the more I understand that fundamentally they stole one of the most valuable things you can steal from a person, and that is the knowledge of your culture. Mm. The knowledge of who you are a part of just because you are. Mm -hmm. And that's such a beautiful, <clears throat> powerful thing to have as a human being. It's just to be like, yeah, this is this is who I am and this is what I do. And it's like, it's like I get to, it's my team. Right. It's my team, whether I like it or not, whether they like me or not, they're always gonna be my team. And so one thing I've always admired about black Americans, and this is something that I feel has traversed the globe, is black Americans created a culture unto themselves, That's right. which is beautiful, you know, hip hop and, and, and style of language and, 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 and dressing and everything. And, and that became a culture. But I feel like, over time, there are a few negative aspects of black culture that have moved forward that don't need to move forward. I agree. You know? So, like, I don't think we need to celebrate ignorance. I genuinely mm -hmm. don't. I, I don't think we need to shun people who are ignorant because we understand how ignorance comes to be. It is right. something that is taught or not taught, but and that is why the person... It. Yeah, but I'm like, sometimes we... We make it seem like it's just like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, man. You're like, hey, what do you do with your money? You're going to invest. Man, man, I don't invest what I look like, a white man. Right. And it's like, no, no, no. But that's the trick. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the trick. Right. It's just like, what? investing is not a white man's thing. Oh, you say you're doing something like, oh, you must be rich. Oh, you got money. Ex exactly, okay, I see you. Exactly. You're doing those white people things now. Right. You're doing this nigga like, going no. to the dentist and shit. Exactly. You see? You see? <laughs> Now what? Now we're gonna make it like crooked teeth is a black thing now? But you, you get what I'm saying? Right. And that's what I'm saying. I, I don't want to work to. We do that in South Africa as well. Like and and but but luckily we still have culture. But like I remember a time when I I thought it was cool. And guys, I remember I bought my first really nice BMW and I pull into the the gas station and the the, the guy pouring the gas comes up to the car and he's like, Show him Lungu, what's in Lapo? Which means like, hey, the white man, what's going on? And he sees I'm not white. He knows wow. him. But it's like a term of like you'd say it to another black person like you made it, man. You got that white man money. Yeah, I don't like how... You got that white crazy. man success. Right. And then I used to think it was cool, and then I realized, I was like, no, we're reinforcing the idea that success is, is inherently white. white. Yes, that, that white is superior. Exactly, that, that, that you go, as a black person, you have now aspired to whiteness as opposed to aspiring to success. Mm. And then you go like, no, we can be successful whether you're black, whether you're Latino, whether you're Asian, whether you're Indian, whether you're whatever. It's like, yes, we have lived in a time where historically white people have been kicking ass for a long time. So everyone thinks that that mm. is the color of success, but it's not true. Success is success, and we need to strive towards that. And I appreciate you saying we don't need to shun people who do ignorant things, but we do have no. to educate people. Yeah, because we see that happening all the time. Like, no, I, 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 I honestly don't have time for that. I genuinely, mm -hmm. I, I, I try my utmost to live in a world where I go like, I don't. I'm not going to judge you because of how you use language. I'm not going to judge you because of how you think if I know that you didn't grow up in a world where you were given... But do you engage and try to educate? Yeah, always. Mm -hmm. I, love, I love talking to people I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> so you hate cancel culture? Genuine. I hate here's what, cancel culture. Here's what I don't like about cancel culture. <laughs> I don't like that there are no terms. I don't like that cancel culture does not come with any specified type of punitive... Uh, like, rules. like, like, I, like, like rules or or, or 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 ideas. So, a lot of the people who participate in cancel culture are the same people who are for prison reform, and I know the two are not the exact same thing, but it operates in the same space of as society. What do we hope to do with people who have wronged us? Right. Mm. Do we wish to banish them to the outskirts of civilization, or do we wish to educate them, inform them, 
punish them when necessary, mm -hmm. and then rehabilitate them and have them come back into society. So if somebody says something trash online, right? And a lot of the, I would say like nine out of 10 people, they're not trying, right. they're not trying to say something trash. They're not trying to be, a, they're not trying. A lot of the time people are not trying. Mm -hmm. And then people come in and they go, you need to be canceled, you're trash, you, that's it, you canceled. And I'm like, what does canceled mean? My problem with canceled is, inherently what it means is you are now ousted from our society. You're but I always ask the question as I go like, where do you think those people go? We're creating a community of canceled people who have no option other than to be canceled with each other. And those people are not going to be, they're, 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 they have no vested interest. Although I feel like usually it's, it's very temporary. No, but I think, I don't, I don't think it is in many ways. That neighborhood would be fire though. <laughs> yeah. Canceled, would. Canceled, people, yeah <laughs> canceled, canceled, by, canceled parties would be fire. I've people get canceled and then things are back to normal Well, there's always, days Yeah, later, but there's varying degrees they, of being canceled. Is what? There's varying yeah. degrees. I agree with you. Some of it is superficial. People are canceled and then they just carry on the next day. Right. But I, I, I do think it would be nice to say like, hey, how do we how do we engage with this person? Hey, Charlemagne, you said this and it hurt me. All right. How do we talk to Charlemagne and go like, yo, this is the thing. This is the thing. You, you never know. Charlemagne might be like, all right, I wasn't trying to do that. And now I understand. But you know when people are not likely to join in with you is when you just pile on and you're like, screw you, Charlemagne, piece of trash. And then the person's back against the wall. They're like, yeah, well, you know what? That's who I am. Black everybody. And that's why you yeah, and that, <laughs> that's why you need redemption culture. But what you also said creates these super villains, right? Yeah. Because when you got all these people attacking it does. somebody and they're back against it the wall. It genuinely does. Now those people that like that person it are like, It genuinely oh, does. So now it's, it's, it's a war. You, 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 you have a moment as a person. You have a moment as a person. I remember when I was in school. I got bullied hard when I was in, what was it, grade four or five. And these kids were relentless. I mean, every single recess, they would bully me and they just teamed up as a group and they just came after me. About you know, what? Like, anything, man. They were like, yo, this kid's got a fat ass. He's got like <laughs> white feet. He's got what? Like, I'm serious. That stuck with me for like deck until like Sinbad became a legend. Wait, like, a Sinbad fat? changed my life. <laughs> Sinbad set me free. Because before then, I was just like, I'm doomed in this world. <laughs> Wait, Simba has a fat ass? They were, no, they were just ass. like, Simba, he's tall, he's yellow, he's got a high ass. It's Simba. Oh, hi, okay. And I was like, yo, that, I was like, that's me. <laughs> and so, uh, and so like these kids, and you know kids, they don't need a thing. That's the thing about kids. They don't need a thing. And these kids came at me and it was relentless. And I will never forget the day when I decided, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be their enemy. I'm going to. I'm gonna dedicate every single moment of my day and my life to destroying uh, them yeah, as a right. group. That and destroys I think you. That's what happens to. But that's what happens to any person when you come at them. Mm -hmm. The animal in us comes out. We're in a corner and we go, okay, I guess this is it now. By Whereas the way, I think if you if you give people an option to join you, if you give people an option to join you, mm -hmm. then you exist in a space where it's like, okay, okay, hey. Not cool. And look, there's always going to be people who are problematic regardless. Right. But I think a lot of people out there are willing to say, I messed up. I wasn't trying to do that or my bad or now I understand. Mm -hmm. And I think we should live in a world where we give people an opportunity to come back in. Right. Intention matters. Definitely. Intention I, matters. I've always said that. A lot of people say they don't agree with that. I completely agree with that. Now, I, think, I also think it's ridiculous to judge people based off old stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like old things they said. Like like Muhammad Ali said, a person who thinks the same way at uh, 50 that he did at 30 wasted right. 20 years of his life. Right. So how can you judge somebody based on what they said at 20 years old? Here's my bigger issue with that. My bigger issue is not that we judge people about what they said or did a long time ago. I have two problems. One, I find it interesting that we live in a culture where people will judge just random civilians by what they did back in the day more than they will judge politicians. Mm -hmm. mm. My tweets have never affected your housing. My tweets have never affected your schools. But people treat it like that. Whereas politicians mm -hmm. just go like, well, I changed and I, my, evolved, my views evolved. And people are like, yeah, but it, the person's changed now. It's like, yeah, but those things actually affected right. you. Or right. And the second part of it is, to your point, I think we always forget when we judge people for what they said in the past, that they were part of a society. I see this happen all the time with comedians. People go like, I can't believe this comedian was telling these jokes. Look at these clips from 1985. Look what this comedian was mm -hmm. saying. Look at the and world like, in 85. And you're like, no, but you realize there's an audience there, yeah. right? Yeah. Look at what everyone you was. realize comedians, we are, we are existing in society. People are laughing with us in our shows. We are a snapshot of the time. The things Chris Rock is saying today are happening today. 
Right. When he's talking about mass shootings, it's because they're happening right now. When you go back in time, he's talking about what's happening back then. Billy D. Williams, he's talking about what's <laughs> happening back then. Eddie Murphy apologized for something. Right. That- and he I said I, he wouldn't say that now. But of course he would know. Right. No, there's like no comedian who would say something that they said 20 years ago. Right. Because society has changed from 20, especially if you're talking about society. Some comedians have benign jokes just about the world. Mm-hmm. What's up with escalators? You ever notice how? That's that's different. But if you talk about politics and if you talk about the world, that is constantly and always changing and <coughs> evolving. And so my issue is we oftentimes want to pin it on individuals because we do not want to blame ourselves as a society. Yes. We do not want to admit that we were all a part of that culture. Yes. You're gonna make it like one comedian with his or her tweets was being homophobic and that's what was blocking gay people all over America. I think if you look deeper, you will find that everyone was a part of that. Everyone was opposed to gay marriage. Everyone didn't think that gay people should exist. A lot of people thought gay people had problems in their heads. And now when societies move forward, People now want to look back and then point at one person and be like, you thought that on your own. Did they think it on their own? Mm. And I think a lot of the time we're afraid as society or we don't want to admit the truth in society that we existed as a problematic culture. And that's the beauty. We're supposed to move forward. Mm-hmm. We are supposed to move forward and as learn people. from your past. We are, but we, we constantly do that. Guys, Barack Obama was opposed to gay marriage. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Which politician wasn't? Think about it. Yeah. And then now, now every politician, and then there's still politicians who are against gay marriage, but most of society goes like, no, we made a mistake and we're moving and forward And people were now. against legalizing marijuana. Exactly. And it now? was criminalized. Look at how many members of the black community were like, no, we need this three strikes rule. We need a war on drugs. We need to this come off that. And now, now people look back. You can only work with the information you have when you have that information. And oftentimes in society, we learn, we change, we evolve. What I don't like is isolating individuals and saying, you are the problem. You alone were the problem. It's like, no, you were clearly a part of a world that thought that this was acceptable. Because there's a reason the tweets didn't blow up back then. Right. Because people were like, yeah, whatever. Now, what about Matt Lauer? What are your thoughts on what's happening with him? Oh, Jesus, I don't know, because a new thing comes out every week. What are you talking about specifically? Because every time someone says Matt Lauer, there's something new. So I don't want to go on record saying anything, and then you like <laughs> it's all under one. Because I'm just like, oh, you know, I I, I don't think it's uh, those are, and then you like, well, you talking about the what? And I'm like, what happened? <laughs> I don't. I, what? Which which thing in particular are you talking about right now? Well, now is the I think she was a producer that came forward and yeah. said that she had a relationship with him, but that she told him no to anal, and then it still happened, and then he retaliated against her. This is the first time he's really like right. given a whole statement about you know, how this is just ridiculous now and I'm going to stand up for myself and so on and so forth. Oh, what did you think the about whole, The whole story is they they slept together. Okay. He asked to have anal sex with her. Uh-huh. Uh, she said no. Right. And then they slept together several times after that. Okay. After the initial time where she said right. that she was raped, they slept together several times after that. Right. And I think this is the constant conversation that we need to talk about in society. And we, you know what's crazy to me is we, we have we've had, like, no forum we have no guidelines. We have no larger discussions around consent. Mm-hmm. Okay? Let's be honest. Consent is something that has been robbed of many individuals in their lives. Right? America, fundamentally. You know, I, I remember a beautiful quote someone said to me where they're like, America was built on a world of no consent. Right. Mm. Black bodies were taken without their consent. Women's bodies were taken without their consent. And this has happened around the world. Consent has always been growing and evolving. And... I understand why some people would say, oh, but then she was sleeping with him. It's like, yeah, man, if you understand the human mind and if you know how we are, a person who does something wrong to you has an interesting hold over you sometimes. Taking some power from you. I, I remember laughing with, I don't remember laughing with my bullies in school, you know? I remember like hanging out with them sometimes. Doesn't mean that they weren't bullying me. Mm-hmm. I remember guys in the hood who would like rob you at the corner. It's like a regular thing. They would just yeah. rob you. You would just pop, hey, what's going on? What you got? In? And then pockets out. But then some days you would be standing with them hanging out because sometimes you felt like maybe, and I don't know what it is psychologically. I'm not a psychologist, but I know like sometimes you're like, maybe I can win them over. Maybe it's in my head. Maybe. And sometimes you feel like it's your fault too. That's the thing. You're like, like maybe, it, maybe it's me. Maybe, it's, maybe this is just the world. Maybe this is. So I get where some people are like, oh, but then the person, it's like, yo, someone can do something wrong to you. People stay you know, in abusive relationships. A parent. And people are like, why are you still with him? A and parent. Like, people, people stay in re- abusive relationships with their parents mm-hmm. all the time. You know, and you'll be like, why do you still love your, your parent? If they were, yeah, but then my mom is like, man, life, our minds, the world are extremely complicated. I don't think 
that should take away from somebody saying, hey, I said no, and I don't care if there was a boyfriend or a husband, I said no, and he didn't listen. Mm -hmm. There was a time when marital <clears throat> rape wasn't a thing. Right, yeah, absolutely They were like, you right. can't rape your wife, she's your wife. And it's like, yeah, but because she's your wife doesn't mean she's your property. She still has the right to say no. And right. I think that's what that's what a lot of people are struggling with in this is they're going like, but I, I don't understand what why would you go back? Why would just like why why would we do anything in this world? A lot of the time, people go back to the people who've hurt them. People stay with the people who are hurting them. And I think we need to get out of existing in a world where we blame the victims in those situations and start looking at the situations that have created or the situations that have allowed them to become victims. How can we even begin to have all of these conversations though? Everything from like Cancel culture with society changing. I, and, I honestly don't know. I, I don't I, know either. I, but I we need like, to. Because we're all on these individual journeys. No, we journeys. need to. Yeah, but we need to. I honestly think we need to. Mm -hmm. Like, just consent is one of the big ones where I go, my mission in life now is to try and find a way for us to sit down and write some sort of manifesto or a thing that people, people don't know what the rules are. And nobody wants to talk about this. No one right. wants to be honest about it. People and, are like, what are the rules? And from every, like, we all, we all existed in a world where it's like, okay, rape was rape. And everyone, there was like the big things. But then as the Me Too movement grew, I started learning from women where I was like, wait, that's part of it? I didn't know. I didn't do it, but I didn't know. Right. I didn't know what rape culture was. Like, you know what rape is. Yes, but, then you, say but you know the culture. rape. Exactly. It's all exactly. type of things that fall And I think a lot culture. of people are learning. Men and women I've actually learned where they're like, oh, I, I didn't actually think of it that way. Mm -hmm. I thought I was a willing participant in what, or I thought that was the rule and that's how it was supposed to be. And I think it would be great if... Somewhere, somehow, we just sat down and we had a conversation as people went, hey, if you could like write down a, a list of rules, how would people approach situations? How would mm -hmm. they work through situations? Because I remember asking like women at my office one day, I said, hey, can I ask you, can I ask you an honest question? Like we, went, we did the sexual harassment training, right? Everyone goes through it. Mm -hmm. And there were a few things where I was like, well, you're not allowed to approach someone at work and this and this. And then I was like, but some people are married in the office. I was like, hey, when, when your dude approached you, like, what 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 was that? And they would be like, oh, that was romantic and it was flirty and he'd leave things at my desk that, every day. Doesn't that fall into the you can't rape your wife type No, of no, thing? no, but then, but then they would go, it's not though, because that's not consent. Like, the person didn't say no. Right. There's okay. a difference. She the liked no, him. The it no was a courting thing. situation. Right. But but no, what, I thought you said if, if a no, couple no, no. approached you. No, no, no. No, you're saying some people are married, so how did exactly. it start Exactly, they married in the office. For them to even get in a relationship. So what I'm saying is, a person, then I would ask, and then the interesting answer was, a lot of the women would go, if any other guy had done that, it would have been creepy. But I liked him, mm -hmm. and I thought it was cute that he was leaving things on my desk every day. Right. And I said, but you do realize now as the boss, if I saw that, I'd have to shut that down because some guy can't be just leaving things on your on your desk every day. That's That could be sexual harassment. And they were like, damn, I, ne I never thought of yeah, that. Yeah, you don't realize how confusing that is? It's very confusing. It like it's, Either it's wrong or it's wrong. It can't be wrong based off if I like you or not. But it is wrong based off if I like you or not, and that is exactly consent, Charlamagne. Right. Yikes. That is, that is life, is it not? Yeah. Is it not? If I come and I hug you as your friend, as Charlemagne, I hug you. A hug is not a wrong thing. But if some now. random person in the street comes and grabs you and hugs you, you're like, don't, you don't know me. Mm -hmm. It is wrong because of how you feel about the person. And that is part of the complex. That's what makes consent complicated. That's what, that happens to is, us all the time, though. Yes. Because of who we are. We, but I don't want you, you don't have a right to my body just because you know me from TV or true. whatever. Approach me as a human being, greet me. If you ask me, can I get a hug? I can say yes or no. I also don't owe you a hug because mm -hmm. you watch my show. I right. will choose to give you a hug or I will say no thank you. But what I'm saying is consent is directly linked to whether or not the person, th that is the rule. Has a woman ever made you uncomfortable at work? No, never at work. Mm -hmm. No, I'm really lucky. Never, ever, ever at work. Mm -hmm. Question. What but if, in the world. In the world, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what if you ask me for a hug? Yes. I say yes. Mm -hmm. Then when I hug you, I notice you have an erection. Right. Then what? I'm asking, what is that? Well, you see, your narcissism has caused you to believe that I didn't come with an erection. You think that I got erect <laughs> hugging you, Charlemagne. That's your problem in life. You think I got a heart on because of you, Charlemagne? Have you seen yourself? I might have had a heart on because I was hanging out with my woman, and then it's like, oh shit, there's Charlemagne, let me go say hi. And then you think that this erection is for you now? You don't know what's going on with the blood in my body, Charlemagne. Oh my How God. dare you?
Listen, I don't know if we'll ever get to the point where we can have those conversations, though. <laughs> no, we can't. I, mean, I, I, I genuinely think we can. We just have to find the space and we'll find a way. I'll make it my mission. I promise you this. Okay. And it has to be I the right you. time, the right place. Listen, I've tried. I tried four or five years ago to have these same conversations. Right, reading. but 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 sometimes people may go, is Charlemagne the right guy to have it at that time? I think it needs to that be a true. conversation led by women and then men participate but in no, it. But no, I was having a conversation based off things that I've been through. No, I understand. But yeah. I'm just saying, if you, right. if you, if you situate it in sometimes the right way. Sometimes it's important for men to listen, too. Instead of trying to lead the conversation to hear what women have to say. But I, I was acknowledging bullshit that I've done. They, yo, they had a, they, they said I raped my wife because I read an article in Teen Vogue, and the Teen Vogue the article was uh, is drunk sex rape. Right. So I talked about the first time me and my wife had sex with each other. Same, I guess, kind of the same thing. You're I understand talking about. what you're saying. Yeah, and we were drunk. But, but clickbait is dangerous. I, I remember that happening to you. Mm -hmm. People choose to take a thing. I mean, it's the same thing they do with Mark Ronson. I'm sapiosexual. He never said I'm sapiosexual. <laughs> and then people are like, he was on a TV show. Someone's like, oh, that's sapiosexual. Hey, Mark, would you be sapiosexual? What is sapiosexual? Like, it's people who say they are only attracted to people's intelligence, not gender, not okay. looks, not anything. It's a thing people put in their like their like Tinder profiles. It's trash. Um, <laughs> Because I, I mean, one is. of the rest of us, I'm only an, uh, attracted to intelligence. <laughs> rah, rah, rah. Anyway, so what I'm saying is clickbait is dangerous because mm -hmm. it removes nuance, mm -hmm. right? I think what you were talking about is an interesting conversation. Now, you oftentimes uh, are not the most delicate when speaking about certain Very issues. True. And so I understand why you get into trouble a lot of the time. But I do get the conversation you were trying to have. Right. And it is a tough one. We don't talk enough about how to engage with each other when there is alcohol. That's very true. Because people just Cause if, say... Because there's a woman, if she was... Next day would have said, oh my God, did we... I didn't even mean to do that. I was so drunk. Did we have sex? Right. She, If she didn't like you, she and she didn't want to do it in retrospect the next day and had no idea it happened, she could say... Right. It's 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 a... It, that is a... Me. That is... I promise you now, that is a really complicated conversation, mm -hmm. again, that we're not having properly because think about how how much we worked on the messaging in and around drinking and driving. Yes. We worked hard and they told us, look, drinking and drive, you cannot drink and drive. If you've had a drink, you throw those keys away. Right. And it became this messaging and this campaign so that people got it in their heads and there's always going to be people who drink and drive. But now it's like, even your friends will be like, yo, are you drinking? Right. Come on, man. Come on. All that Uber Grab that Uber. lift. Grab an Uber. What's, mm -hmm. What are you doing? And, and, and I think that messaging became solid and it became clear that drinking and driving do not mix you should not be doing it. And then people were like, is it one drink, is it two drink? People were like, yo man, drinking and driving do not mix, don't even take a chance. And I've witnessed the shift in my life where right. when it started, we were like, meh, I'm fine, to now being like, you know what, I think I'm gonna drink tonight. Mm -hmm. Let me just let me just take an Uber. I'm not, I'm not even gonna take my car. I think I'm gonna drink. And it's look so at, much easier for us now because we can call a car. Exactly, and, and look at where we've gotten in society. We think ahead now. Right. And I think we haven't gotten to that place when it comes to sex and alcohol. We almost don't think ahead of going like, okay, hey, I'm going to drink tonight. Therefore, I, I need to limit whether or not I can or cannot have sex. I, how, do we, how do we work through that? We haven't thought about it. Mm -hmm. And so what you have is groups of people leaving clubs together. I don't know your level of sobriety. You don't know mine. Some of my friends don't know when I'm drunk. They really don't. They'll just be like, Trevor, you you were drinking. I'm like, man, I can't believe how 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 I I, I, I thought that alcohol hit me harder than I thought. Right, because usually if I get drunk, I'm a pass out, like fall asleep person. <laughs> oh, like, you see, yeah, right. I go, I just pass right out and go and wake up in the morning with the best sleep I ever had and have no idea. Like, and people be like, oh my god, you were so funny last night. But usually, I think with me and my friends, when we go out, it's always we go together, we leave together, and we make sure we get home. And somebody's always. You know, that person, that's the point person where we're mm -hmm. like, okay, we're not going to drink too much. And when right. I was younger, I was a lot more like drink, 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 drink. Now it's like one or two drinks maximum and that's it. Yeah. Have Are you we... read Malcolm Gladwell's new book, Talking to Strangers? No. He has a it's, he has a great chapter in there about the whole Brock Turner situation mm -hmm. that is that is very interesting. It's kind of along the lines you're discussing. Mm -hmm. We Like we have to have these conversations because, mm -hmm. and, and the, the problem is, Everything is tied into everything else. So what we, what we, while we're having a conversation around alcohol and sex, we also need to be talking about consent. While we're talking about consent, we also have to talk about toxic masculinity and the way men see themselves in relation to a woman. And a lot of the time, that's that's why men are doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, men don't take rejection well because it's somehow tied into their their idea of how manly they are. You know, and if you think about it. This was the messaging we got as men growing up. Absolutely. From all spheres, by the way, not just from like our dad. I remember growing up with Aaliyah. 
Listen to those lyrics today, people. Huh? If at first you don't succeed, dust, dust yourself, yourself off, off and, and try again, again, try again. What would you do to get to me? What would you say to have your way? Hmm? Would you give up or try again if I hesitate to let you in? You don't even got to go that far back. You can go to how many drinks does it take for you to get yeah. with me? Like, blame like, it on the alcohol. Jamie Fox, like, but I'm saying like, and so what we don't realize is we, we also have to go like, oh man, how are we being programmed? What, are we, what have we thought you is are. acceptable? How do we think it's acceptable? And how do we change those right. things? It's time. And that's, you know what I mean? Someone really needs to write those. an R&B song where it's like, you know what I mean? Like, girl, we drunk, leaving the club. Let's just sleep. Tomorrow we'll be sober. And then we see if we have sex. Like, that's what we need to do. People need to write new songs. Like, Miguel, everyone. That's a challenge I, I, I sent to you guys. Write consent songs. Write songs where it's like very clear. Yeah. And then I whip out the condom. Like, real ones. And I ask you, are you sure? You say, yeah. No, you're right. That's what we need. About we need like, because if you think about it, a lot of the time we're informed by what's happening. When you in the club the songs are telling you what to do it would be so dope if you said it you know what i mean no nah, about four or five years ago i wanted to do like a like like a rape culture special just talking to these young men especially these young men on college campuses and right. having the same conversation but then you know once they labeled me a rapist i didn't think i was the person to, <laughs> to lead that conversation and i like that you had that emotional intelligence charlamagne can i just say you have grown hey, man. you have grown <laughs> it's interesting i did this town hall with these young women it was all women and it was in Long Island, and they were, they're all high school students, mm-hmm. right? And it was maybe about like 150 women, and they were all talking about experiences that they've had with, it was a whole Me Too town hall. Right. And to hear how like girls who are 13, 14, 15, certain things that happen to them, yeah. and how they don't even feel like their own class. One girl said every day she gets off the bus, and this guy who is her neighbor like runs over and grabs her ass, and the girls laugh at her, and they're like, ah, she loves it, she loves it. And how they're not even supporting each other. Right. And the girls, like a lot of them started crying, talking about experiences that they've had, because they don't have a chance or a place where they can vent or feel Damn. like that. That's our generation too, Care though. about them and, and feel like they can be heard but i don't know if that conversation would have been as good if cameras were rolling i don't think so either if there were guys in the room and i do feel like it's something they need to hear so you can see real life people who are affected Mm -hmm. and how these young girls you know one girl was talking about she was living with her family and her sister's boyfriend actually assaulted her and she ended up getting pregnant and having a baby and now the family doesn't talk to her and a lot of the time that's a story it's somebody mm -hmm. in the family it's somebody who everybody knows right and these are all things that people need to hear, but it's just, I think, sometimes so hard until people get to a space where they can express themselves without, you know, But I think that's that. what we need to do is just create mm-hmm. more of those spaces. Exactly yeah. what you're saying. Because I'm just, fine with doing it in a space where no one has to see it That's or hear what it. it is. Yeah. It has to be closed door conversation because yeah. in that way you're actually teaching and people are learning. Nobody's going to get yeah. judged and crucified. No one's, no one's recording. And it also it. makes no you no, respond no to people answer, differently no, too. Yeah. When we're all in the room together, it helps women, I think, support each other when they see other things going on and be more sensitive to that and know that, you know, this happened to this person. I saw how she reacted. Right, yeah. I need to rethink how I look at things. Yeah, I I just think we need to do all, we need to do more of that mm-hmm. in more spaces, and I think people take for granted that you can start on a on a small level. A lot of the time, people say like you know like you'll say, how do we do this? How do go like guys? Just do it. There's also we have groups of friends. Mm-hmm. That's right. I've started doing a thing with my friends where there's just like real talk. There's moments where we sit down as men and we just go like, yo, there's five of us sitting together. Let's just talk about consent. Right. Let's talk about what we could be doing better with each other. And a lot of the time, you know, like, I remember when we started saying these things, there was always like that, that hesitancy, you know, like there'd be the one for it be like, oh, that's gay. Yeah, yeah man, what are, you, what are you talking? And it's like, no, 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 it's not, though. It's not. And even if it was, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. What we're talking about right now is as men with each other, what can we do better? How can we change our thinking? What are we struggling with as friends? How do we navigate these issues? Because we do have groups all, all throughout society. Mm-hmm. And I think we take for granted the power of that, just sharing that vulnerability, right. that moment. No, and it's not going to end that, up on a Snapchat or Instagram story that yeah. I can just share. But just just being honest and sharing it mm-hmm. with somebody else. I think it starts with us, meaning like if people see you actually doing the work, like you personally are trying to be a better person, whether you're right. going to therapy, whether you're just seeking some sense of healing, I think they'll they'll, they'll receive the messaging. Well, I hope better. so. I think it contributes. Yeah, I think right. it contributes. But just sharing it helps. I remember once, like the the story around consent. This is like, I I I went on a date with a woman, and we had a great night, and things were looking good. And she was like, "Let's go back to your place." And I was like, "Oh, okay, let's, let's go back to my place." And we head back to my place. And then when we get back to my place, she was like. Oh, oh man, I whew, I don't know if I should be here. I've had too much to drink. And I was like, oh, well, let me let get me you get a you car. Out of here. Immediately. I was <laughs> like, well, let me get you a car. Right. I was like, oh, you sh- I'm, I'm happy you said this. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I call- and then she was like, wait, what are you doing? 
You know, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm getting you a car. <laughs> and she said, no, I didn't say I want to leave. And I said, no, 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 no. I Listen here. What you said there, I have to take. And I'm not even trying to be an asshole about this. I'm not trying to punish you. Nothing like that. You just said you don't think you should be. You've had a lot to drink. And I didn't know how much you had to drink. I, did, I met you pr- like mm-hmm. middle drinks vibes. So let me get you a car. There's another day. We can always meet on another Absolutely. day. Right. And that's a, the biggest thing that I've learned in life around a lot of consent, sex, and all of these things is, you know what helps a lot? Just getting to know people before you have sex with them. <laughs> just like spending a, nice a lot key. of time getting <laughs> to know them. Like it's not going away. You don't have to have sex on the first date. Like just take your time, get to know well, the I people. Can, it's a million rap records that say otherwise. That is true. Right. That's again. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And real life experiences. That that's what I'm saying again. Musicians can help with a lot of this messaging. We need like yeah. We need like new songs that come as out and change everything. Says, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> if the homies got a way to have some, it's a lot of fun. The homies. <laughs> if the homies got a way to have some, huh? Come right. on. Now we're singing that true. in the streets, huh? And it's like, what happened? Oh, she said, I'll see you next week. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Now we're having fun. And once a woman says, I've had too much. To drink or you see? I don't know any exactly. type of hesitation just exactly do we it. need to go back to everyone and just be like yo mm-hmm. let's let's have let's let's remix songs and create great messaging that goes out to everybody so that young kids out there go you know what I am not a loser because I didn't have sex with this girl on the first date if anything this is how it should be and Absolutely. I'm living a great a little life Janet Jackson let's wait a while let's wait a while <laughs> let's just wait a little while all right wise words from my man Trevor Noah Trevor I love talking to you, but why are you here? What, 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 what yeah, did you come to promote? Comedy tour. Well, I was coming to promote? Oh, I thought I was just coming to hang out with you guys. <laughs> oh, I, was, I, was just no, walking, I, I was just walking past the building. That's what <laughs> hey, I was doing. I was just making no, no, sure. I'm, the New York no, Comedy I'm, I'm excited. Festival. There's only two things, only mm-hmm. two things that I would love for you and everyone that listens to the show to know about. I'm doing two of the biggest shows of my life. Madison Square Garden. Whoop, whoop. Hey. That's huge. The Garden or the Theater? No, the Garden. The Garden Garden. The Garden right. Garden. Okay. On November 8th. Okay. The Garden Garden. November 8th. Thank you very much. November 8th. The Garden Garden. First time, maybe my last time. I don't know. It's just been a <laughs> dream of mine. <laughs> and like that's that's going to be huge for me. November uh, 8th. November 8th. Okay. And then December 6th, I'm in Los Angeles doing the Staples. Wow. So Staples Center, I'm going to be there. Wow. Lifelong dream, both arenas, both amazing cities. Two cities that loved me before anyone knew who I was. People came out and watched my shows. And so if you're in Los Angeles, if you're in New York, come and laugh. We're having a good time. I don't I, I, I don't want to disappoint people now, but I don't do like a ton of politics. I just, I try and take a break from that at mm-hmm. my shows. Family so, life, uh, growing yeah, up. Yeah, I, I, I have fun, man. Yeah. I talk about other things. There's more to life than just politics. Mm-hmm. And that's what the stand-up is about. So, do you feel like you're in a box with that? Do you feel like they put you Not in a box? Not at all. Not at okay, all. Okay. It's, it's a blessing and I enjoy it. I love to, I love, I live in politics, so I love it. But my stand-up is timeless, so I go... I don't, I don't care. I don't care what you. I. I've. You know how many people come up to me. This is like the best compliment I get. A lot of people come up to me and they be like, "Yo, know, Trevor, I'm a, I'm a Republican and I don't like your political views, but I, I like your stand-up comedy. You're a funny guy. <laughs> You're a funny guy. Sometimes when you're talking about Trump, I wish I could punch you in the mouth." But when you're doing the comedy, I'm not gonna. You got me on the floor, buddy. You do a great job. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. You could pass as a white man with that voice. If you, <laughs> with that voice. But if I'm if I'm at a counter, I'll just be like, okay. when I make reservations, that's the voice I use. <laughs> I like how the '85 South show was here. They said, Trump, "No, the British guy." <laughs> yeah, no, people they ask, say that. People ask me that all the time. They'd be like, "Oh, you're the British dude from South Africa." I'm like, "You just included two countries in one, but I will take it." That's what someone said to me the other day. I was at the Dominican Day Parade. That was like my favorite moment ever Dominican Day Parade was happening I didn't know so I'm trying to get home I'm walking <laughs> through New York now I'm like I crossed the street but now I'm in it then I gotta walk down with it and then turn so now I'm walking with the people and then one dude was like yo Trevor Noah I told you that dude was Dominican man <laughs> he's that South African Dominican dude and I was like yeah okay I'll, I'll take it. it I'm just trying to get home <laughs> I will take it my friend hey Trevor Noah did you give him the website to buy the tickets for it the- TrevorNoah.com okay. everything TrevorNoah.com if you type Trevor Noah and you type Los Angeles it'll come up if you type Trevor Noah and you type New York it'll come up if you type Trevor Noah Charlemagne some other shit will come up don't type that don't do that New Please York don't do that. Los Angeles <laughs> <laughs> New York. They're trying to move past that. <laughs> We're trying to get past that. <laughs> <laughs> New York, Los Angeles. TrevorNoah.com, Trevor Noah Twitter, Trevor, Trevor Noah Instagram, Trevor Noah. If you type Trevor Noah, that's that's who I am, uh-huh. and that is how you shall find me if you are looking for me. Always a pleasure, my brother. Thank you very much. This Trevor is always Noah, fun. It's the Breakfast Club.